<laughs> conference uh, co conference <clears throat> day uh, we have uh, today three keynote uh, lectures uh, regular session and student session in regular session we uh, uh, have uh, a, a little bit uh, changes instead of four presentation they will be five uh, yesterday's <coughs> lost presenter will appear today uh, for, for us and now let's start our first keynote lecture our presenter is professor Ivana Mečić from the University of Niš, Serbia. You, you are welcome. Thank Let's you. Start your lecture. I will start sharing. Can you see my? Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, thank you very much for calling me on this conference. It's a great pleasure to be here today. And today I will talk about some new type of regular fuzzy relations and their application in the field of uh, fuzzy social network theory. Since I'm not sure that uh, a lot of you are familiar with the work in a fuzzy framework, I'm trying today to make this talk uh, more open for a big public. And uh, this talk corresponds to joint work with Stefan Stanimirovic. Okay, first of all, um, I will talk a little about uh, social network analysis since um, notion of regular fuzzy relation is uh, strongly collect connected to a notion of fuzzy social networks. And um, uh, uh, since many of my friends know that I'm uh, doing some, some kind of artificial intelligence uh, connected to a social network analysis, they're usually saying that uh, they are worried about the fact that somebody is watching us. Uh, and um, I ask them, uh, wh why are you worried? What worries you there? Uh, is it uh, because uh, the owner of a social network knows uh, that you are a book lover, that you are, uh, what, uh, what message do you um, change with your friends or uh, what stuff do you like? If you are worried about it, I'm saying, don't worry because uh, you're not uh, the person of interest. Nobody is actually interested, uh, for example, in uh, Ivana Mitzic, what does she uh, uh, like, uh, does she want to travel or what message she uh, changed with her friends. Uh, what is important in a social network analyze is that um, to find this group of similar objects, of, of similar uh, people, and uh, to find some similarity between them, uh, them and uh, then to observe their behavior, their attitude, their uh, tendency. And um, then I say uh, to my friends, so don't worry if someone what is watching you because of the fact that uh, he knows uh, things about you, but you should worry uh, how one who knows what you like can manipulate with you. That is the problem. And, <clears throat> uh, but also um, I think don't, you, you should not worry that much because uh, every uh, new thing has something good and something bad. And uh, I'm focusing on a good things in a social network. It helps us a lot uh, by uh, clustering people in uh, groups with a similar interest. We can help them to, to increase their, um, attitude and uh, uh, that's the way uh, we are thinking when we are doing some clusterization of a network. So uh, uh, in a social network, uh, the, main, uh, the main task should be, in social network analyze, should be uh, the main task to, uh, to cluster and analyze uh, uh, data and to find some, um, this, uh, some hidden patterns in uh, groups. And for example, here is a picture. Can you see this picture? I uh, wrote it, uh, uh, wrote this picture uh, in order to uh, show you uh, for uh, customers and their bills. And can you see some similarity between these four different bills? You can say these two people probably have babies at home since they are buying baby stuffs. This one does not have 
a little child at home. And this one maybe have, but probably they're buying just a present for someone. So uh, this information is, uh, can be somehow relevant to people uh, which are doing the marketing in some store and uh, they use it. Uh, so it's important to cluster somehow to make groups with the, or with the object with the similar interest. I will show today uh, the uh, concrete application of uh, clusterization of social network in uh, two situation uh, uh, connected to, to marketing. Uh, so uh, first one is cross-selling strategy. What does it mean? Um, as I said, we are, uh, we are looking at some market and uh, this store want to increase its profit. What is a cross-selling strategy? If uh, you are not familiar with the, the notion, uh, it means if uh, you go to, uh, for example, to McDonald's say, and buy a hamburger, uh, then uh, they, uh, they uh, suggest you to buy a pom free because it is the similar thing and uh, you should, it, it goes one with, a, with another and that's the way they want to, to, um, uh, to make you buy more. So, uh, if uh, the market wants to increase the sale uh, of their item, they uh, should suggest customers uh, the things that they are interested in, not some, uh, some random things, but upon the things they bought already, uh, the, uh, the market should uh, offer them some interesting things uh, that are uh, likable to buy. In, uh, there, uh, therefore, uh, looking for our groups, these two, uh, uh, these two uh, customers uh, probably will buy some baby stuffs. And uh, this, uh, this is not uh, our interest group. Well, uh, this one is uh, likable to be, but, but not uh, fully uh, uh, is in this group. Okay. Another example, which is even more important, is uh, concretely um, um, about customer segmentation and how does it work. Uh, I believe that all of you are familiar with uh, this because uh, you probably, uh, all of you have uh, some kind of uh, social network and you know that if you're looking to some uh, things, for example, about traveling and, and so on, then uh, you, uh, you give uh, uh, many other information uh, in, your, uh, in your news feed about it. Yeah, that is a segmentation of a group in, um, in a group of similar interest. And how, uh, uh, when promoting product on, inter on the internet, how uh, we find uh, the, the interest group, the target group. It is important to find the target group well, because if you are not getting target group well, you can promote it as much as you can, as much as you want, but you, won't have a good results. And that's why um, social media, social networks are more important than a television in promoting because it's more personal. Uh, you know who is your concrete customer. It's not a television and everybody watches everything. Not, uh, not all are interested in same things. But here uh, we can somehow clusterize the group of people in uh, this interest group and offer them uh, good things. So um, <clears throat> how can we uh, get this target group well? Uh, in the real world situation, uh, probably you should find influencer in the area you are promoting product. For example, if I want to sell something for uh, skin care, then, um, and then it, uh, there, there are a lot of influencers in that area and then their followers are probably the women that are also taking care of skin and that would, be, um, uh, would want to buy my product. So um, the influencer is, for example, the node in the network with a much, much greater number of income than the outcome links. 
and this relationship between um, between uh, no, nodes in the social network. There are a million of nodes in the social network. It's uh, uh, in the if we will want to watch this whole network, we can see nothing. But uh, uh, therefore, the main task in a social network analysis and social network theory is uh, to characterize um, network structure in terms of nodes and uh, ties between these nodes, and then somehow uh, meaningfully to reduce such large network in, uh, to, uh, to groups and to make some smaller structure, but which also preserve the behavior of original one. Okay, uh, this will help us um, to um, uh, to understand uh, to understand uh, the the uh, the interest of groups, uh, their attitude, what they want, uh, and then we can uh, somehow positively manipulate with them. So um, scientists uh, uh, were interested in uh, in that uh, clusterization and. First, uh, uh, Lorian and White introduced the notion of structural e equivalence in order to uh, somehow clusterize actors which uh, have the same role or a position in a network. But this first definition was not that good because it said two actors are equivalent if they have same ide uh, have identical neighborhoods, identical links to other. So let me uh, uh, ask you, uh, is there uh, in any social network, to, uh, do, do there uh, exist two people which have same links uh, to every other people? It's pretty impossible. Uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, I have a twin sister. We've been in the same basic school, in the same high school, uh, on the same university. We are working together also. But in, in our social networks, we don't have all the same neighborhoods, uh, neighbors. And uh, therefore, uh, this uh, definition, uh, when used in clusterization, always gave uh, identical res uh, uh, relation as uh, the best sectoral equivalence on observed network. And we uh, cannot use uh, identical relation for further factorization. Therefore, um, structural equivalence were not a good solution. Further, Another, um, um, some 10 years later, uh, White and Dries introduced uh, the notion of regular equivalence, which is a generalization of previous one, and says that two actors are regularly equivalent if they are equally rela related to equivalent others. This uh, definition is much better. In that case, me and my sister would be in the same group because we have these equivalent uh, uh, others in our group, but also was not that good uh, because uh, uh, still the definition was very, uh, very strict. And uh, the other uh, shortage of this approach is um, that uh, in the case of uh, classical, we don't have actually classical social network to analyze, which are not fuzzy. A more a relation uh, uh, in uh, between people are uh, cannot be um, uh, explained just by using zero and one. We want some values in between in order to show uh, the level uh, to which two nodes are connected. Because you have in a social network many actors which are not strongly connected to each other, which are just friends which never communicate. Then the level of their communication is very, very uh, low. But on the other hand, uh, with your family, closest family, you have this strong relationship. It would have very, very high level and a uh, lot of people you have in between of that. Okay, therefore, uh, we uh, scientists came to a definition of fuzzy relational system and um, fuzzy relational systems are known in other fields, not just in the fuzzy social network theory. And what does it mean? Fuzzy relational system is a system which, is, uh, which contains one non-empty set and a family of fuzzy relation on this set. 
In some cases, um, uh, family, we have also family of fuzzy substance on, on, on the same set, um, which is joined to uh, these, uh, these two parts. And um, uh, there are many interpretation of such systems, as I said, but um, the most important is uh, for us, the fuzzy social network. Um, uh, he, uh, and it said that uh, this given non-empty set is actually set set of actors, and relation between actors uh, is a fuzzy relation. Or whereas uh, in some cases uh, fuzzy subsets are attribute, attributes that uh, these actors can have. Uh, in this case, uh, I'm not going uh, to consider a uh, fuzzy social network with attributes. I will on only consider this one with the um, given set and the fuzzy relation. So uh, we are coming to uh, uh, some new definition, uh, uh, relatively new. It is definition of fuzzy regular equivalence. And um, this is nothing more than a translation of the notion of classical regular equivalence to a fuzzy framework. And uh, this definition also generalized the classical uh, regular equivalence, but um, it is much better because of these fuzzy values uh, in, in uh, the matrices we are watching. Uh, it uh, performs better results when, uh, when considering clusterization of the network. Okay. Uh, however, when we started to analyze uh, regular equivalence, uh, uh, I asked my colleagues to make some um, big, uh, uh, make program with a lot of matrices, random matrices of uh, various um, um, size uh, and try to uh, use the greatest fuzzy regular equivalence because they uh, give a best re uh, results in the, re the reduction of the number of states. And uh, I asked my friends, can you make me these all random matrices and for all of them compute these greatest, uh, greatest regular uh, fuzzy equivalence, fuzzy regular equivalence. And then uh, uh, let us see how many of these matrices can be really reduced by using this greatest solution. And um, only in 10% uh, of a case, uh, the fuzzy regular equivalence could be used in a factorization of or, or a state reduction of uh, such a, uh, large networks. That was not uh, that was not very good. So uh, we decided to change approach because uh, we wanted to find some better solution for block modeling. Uh, <clears throat> therefore, uh, we have uh, decided to uh, introduce a new type of uh, fuzzy regular uh, equivalence known as uh, fuzzy approximate regular equivalence. And this notion is a generalization of no notion of classical regular equivalence, and uh, it performs much better results in um, uh, the reduction of the number of states. Uh, what is uh, uh, the bad thing in uh, this approach that uh, we cannot make a structure which have the same behavior as original one, but it is, it is not uh, actually need, needed. Uh, we just need to have some similar behavior, uh, somehow to, to preserve the structure, to find some kind of homomorphism which um, uh, which uh, um, preserves the original structure to some level. And you can, you can see now how do we do that. Okay. Uh, since we are going to talk uh, about fuzzy uh, regular uh, equivalence uh, of uh, uh, hating algebra as a, a set of truth values, I will uh, recall us what is a hating algebra. And as you can see, hating algebra is a, a structure where uh, is an algebra where a non-empty set uh, H with uh, infinum suprema and uh, e, uh, and uh, the smallest element one and the great uh, smallest el element zero and the greatest element one is a bounded distributive lattice. And 
uh, we have a binary of uh, operation here uh, called implication, which uh, satisfies the, the residuation property. Residuation property is given by this formula. Uh, and uh, uh, the complete hating algebra is just an hating algebra, which is also a complete uh, lattice. Since we are going to use a uh, uh, notion of by residuum, uh, here I give a definition. It is uh, the kind of equivalence between two objects. Yeah. Uh, the most uh, known example of uh, uh, hating algebra is Gettel structure, where set H is uh, real unit interval 0, 1. Uh, infima is minimum and suprema is maximum, whereas implication is given by for following formula. Okay, now since we know what is a hating algebra, uh, recall us also what are fuzzy sets and fuzzy relations. Fuzzy set, uh, we, uh, in order to define a fuzzy set, we first have to know um, uh, that we have a hating algebra and uh, some non-empty set called a universe uh, of discourse or just a universe of elements. And a fuzzy set is nothing else but a mapping from this set U to, uh, to complete hating algebra. Similarly, fuzzy relation, over U is a mapping from Cartesian product U times U to H. <clears throat> uh, so uh, fuzzy relation is uh, just a fuzzy set, uh, some, but from uh, this Cartesian product. Also, here we give a definition of a composition. This uh, definition of composition of two fuzzy relation is um, pretty natural, but uh, I am giving it here because it will be uh, needed very much in the further work. And here are uh, some two new definitions. One is called the degree of substitute, and the second one is the degree of equivalence. Um, the degree of subset, as it uh, says, uh, the, the, uh, the name of definition, uh, helps us to uh, show uh, in the what level uh, the set A is the subset of the set B. And uh, similarly, uh, e, uh, the degree of, of equivalence uh, uh, shows us in the what level uh, sets A F, and B are equivalent. So. Here, here is a formal definition of a fuzzy social network. If we have a non-empty non set, A, called the so set of actors or a nodes of network, and a set of family of fuzzy relations on that set, uh, which present the connection between these uh, actors or nodes, then uh, the fuzzy social network is that pair, as we mentioned all, already, what would be definition of a classical regular fuzzy relation, which is uh, um, introduced before? Uh, as you can see, fu some fuzzy relation on same set is um, regular fuzzy relation if for every i in uh, i, uh, this uh, uh, is right regular if the set of this inequality is satisfied. And uh, if uh, the, the set of second inequalities is satisfied, then it is called left regular. And if one relation is both left and right regular, then it is called just regular relation. In that case, uh, we can uh, change this uh, sign with, uh, with just uh, equation. Okay. Uh, now, uh, how, how did we generalize this definition? We consider this, uh, this is a kind of inclusion in a fuzzy, uh, in a fuzzy framework. Uh, less or equal is usually uh, used for presenting inclusion. So uh, we, we, instead of con uh, considering this uh, very strict definition, we were wondering, can we uh, demand this um, left side of inequality to be a subset of this right side of inequality in some given level me? So if it is satisfied, then uh, this fuzzy relation phi is called me approximate regular relation. In this, uh, similarly for second one, 
we, uh, for second case, uh, we obtain mi approximate left regular, and in the case of regular, we obtain mi approximate regular. And what is important here, that in the case mi is equal one, then we can just omit the word mi uh, approximate, because in that case, uh, this uh, inequality as of uh, this uh, greater than one is just equal to previous one, to this one. And we obtain just regular relation. This means that, that our notion is really the generalization of original one. Okay. What would be the main advantage of this approach? Um, as I said already, for most social network, uh, we cannot use regular relation um, uh, in order to factorize the network, because as uh, as I said, in a practical situation, we showed that only in the 10 percentage of cases, uh, these uh, relations are very good for factorization. But approximate regular relations are close to them, similar to them, and they perform much better in the factorization and state reduction, because they form much wider class, class and uh, the greatest solution of, of this class is always better for reduction than the classical one. So <clears throat> we have also shown uh, that uh, if we have some fuzzy social network and some given fuzzy relation, uh, then we can all, for a given degree mi, we can always uh, uh, compute the greatest mi approximate right uh, or left, uh, or, or any, uh, or classical regular uh, fuzzy relation co contained in this given starting relation. So, um, uh, since uh, we have these three types, but I'm not going to analyze all, all three of them because they are similar. I'm just going to talk about regular relations because it contains this both case. Okay. Since we have the greatest solution, and uh, we obtain that this, uh, if uh, the starting relation P0 is, if this uh, relation is fuzzy pre-order, then the greatest solution is also fuzzy pre-order. Uh, fuzzy pre-orders can be used in the factorization. And uh, what is important? Uh, when we have two levels, or uh, two degree, different degrees of similarity, and uh, actually uh, the, one, uh, the, the one is greater than, uh, than other, me is equal to, uh, is greater or equal to me, then the set of all me approximate regular relation is always contained in the set of uh, all me approximate regular relations. This one set is clearly greater and the greatest solution of uh, this set is uh, therefore always uh, bigger than the greatest solution to this set. Okay, this fact will be needed in further work. So since we know that we can compute somehow the greatest solution and this greatest solution is a fuzzy pre-order and will give um, uh, the best result in the uh, factorization of the network compared to other, uh, other solutions, uh, other uh, regular uh, relations used in a factorization, then um, uh, we wanted to compute this uh, uh, solution. And how do uh, we compute the solution? We use the residuation property of fuzzy relation. We are actually transforming this classical uh, inequality into this one. And then uh, we make some iterative procedure for uh, computing uh, the greatest uh, solution. Uh, this is procedure for, uh, for determining uh, the right, and this one is you, uh, for uh, computing the left um, approximate regular relation. If we want to compute the regular relation, then we need to use both of these properties. Here, I will uh, consider how to compute the classical regular relation. So I will use right and left side. And you can see that I'm starting from some given fuzzy relation, which is a fuzzy pre-order. And then 
I compute the next relation as in FEMA of previous one, and then uh, using this right, uh, uh, right property, and uh, in FEMA, this left property. Uh, so if I omit this part, I will compute only a, a right, a greatest right approximate solution. And if I omit this part, I will compute only left approximate solution. So this sequence that I am obtaining is a sequence of positive preorder, which is descending. Every element is smaller, uh, every next element is smaller than previous one. In the moment when uh, k, uh, when we get some k such that phi k is equal to phi k plus one, then we obtain our greatest approximate regular uh, relation. What is important here, this procedure or always they terminate in the finite number of steps. This is due to the fact that uh, our structure is locally finite. Okay. How do we use now this, our greatest solution? Uh, we use it uh, to make a factorization. And how do we uh, construct this factorization? First of all, we use a fuzzy preorder in order to make some natural fuzzy equivalence of it. Uh, we are making a natural fuzzy equivalence by using this formula. As you can see, this formula is uh, used for metric, uh, making uh, symmetric solution. Okay, since we already had a, a reflexive and transitive one. And then for a given fuzzy network uh, and a given fuzzy pre-order on it. We uh, uh, fuzzy pre-order, but not uh, just a fuzzy pre-order, uh, uh, approximate uh, regular uh, relation, which is a fuzzy pre-order. Then we can make a fuzzy network in the following way. We make a factor set A with respect to this uh, natural fuzzy equivalence uh, as a, a set, a factor set of A uh, with the following formula. All elements of these sets are looking that way. This is very well known uh, definition. Or, um, for a class of uh, some given equivalence, that, which means that our factor set will contain all equivalence class of uh, this, uh, this equivalence, of this natural equivalence. And uh, the transitions or uh, just relations on, uh, on this uh, set will uh, be changed in the following way. We will make this new construction, uh, which, uh, which is a composition of our relation at uh, this given uh, uh, relation, fuzzy relation, and again, composition with our uh, relation. Uh, if you are familiar with the uh, notion of homomorphism, it uh, somehow uh, can, uh, can remind you to, to that notion, okay. Uh, now, uh, this new construction preserves the structure. We have shown that uh, this new um, uh, construction is actually um, kind of preserving both sides. Uh, we have a homomorphism in the both sides, some weaker kind of homomorphism. And uh, as we can see, if we have this uh, um, uh, any fuzzy preorder, then the block model we or we are constructed uh, we constructed uh, with respect to our given relation uh, is a, a mere regular block model, even only if uh, our relation phi is me regular approximate uh, fuzzy relation. Okay. Here is an example how it looks in the class in the real world situation. We have a Gedel structure, and now we are considering some small network with eight uh, nodes because we can uh, see better uh, how it works on smaller nodes, on, on smaller network. And <clears throat> as you can see, we have two relations on uh, this. Uh, uh, structure on the on this fuzzy network and then uh, for a case uh, we get me uh, is equal to 0 0.9 we obtain this greatest solution and uh, a greatest regular fuzzy relation approximate uh, and in the case me is equal to one where we consider classical regular relation we obtain this solution 
This first one gives a, redu a reduction of original matter to one network with four nodes, but this one is uh, not giving any reduction. We have the, the uh, network of the same size. So this is the advantage of our approach. Now we can uh, reduce network by just by taking this level. Okay. Now, um, the main result of, of this talk is a method for computing all me approximate models of, of a given fuzzy network. What does it mean? If we have some fuzzy network and we have some starting uh, degree, me one, uh, we, can, um, we, we can split the whole need to interval me one to one into sub intervals, which all have the same corresponding um, greatest uh, me approximate regular fuzzy relation. And then this, or if, the, if some interval has same, greatest mean approximate regular relation, then it, have, it has the same greatest, uh, smallest block model, corresponding block model. How do we do the procedure? We were starting for, from our uh, element mi1, and then we compute the greatest, uh, uh, corresponding greatest mi1 approximate regular fuzzy relation. And then for, for this relation, we can compute the greatest level of similarity, mi1, by this formula. And we showed that for all this interval, we have the same uh, uh, relation as the greatest one. Okay. We computed the first interval. Now we just take some given precision, and uh, for this we increase. Uh, uh, this is mistake. It should uh, be written ni one plus epsilon. Me two is ni one plus epsilon, and then we repeat the uh, the procedure. We compute the greatest solution. Then for this greatest solution, we compute the greatest level of similarity, and uh, this is uh, our int new interval, and we repeat the procedure until we get uh, the last value to be equal to one. How it looks in real world case, uh, we will consider the same situation, the network with eight nodes, and we'll start with, um, we'll start with uh, me equal to 0 0.2, and we have a precision 0 0.02. Uh, we are starting with 0 0.2 and uh, from 0 0.2 to 0 0.4, uh, the greatest uh, uh, approximate regular fuzzy relation is universal one. And therefore the block model that we obtained will have only one node, but the similarity to original network would be very bad. And this solution is not one that we are looking for. Then we are computing the next interval, and this ne next interval is starting from 0 0.42, and it, uh, we computed that it is uh, uh, the ends with uh, 0 0.6, and in that case we have this greatest relation corresponding, and the block model has three states, but. As we can see, this, uh, the level of the degree of similarity is only 0 0.6, which is not that good. But uh, uh, the next uh, interval is 0 0.62, and uh, it ends with 0 0.9. And this is the this relation, which, as we said, produce the block model with only four states. Okay, it, it, the reduction is good, but also the level of similarity is good. And the last interval uh, is 0 0.92 to one. And the greatest approximate regular relation in that case is uh, <clears throat> phi two, this one, which does not produce any reduction. So the number of uh, states of this block model is eight. Um, Therefore, uh, I uh, I'm saying that the best one, uh, the best solution uh, is uh, this third interval in that case. And <clears throat> here, uh, that would be all for today. Thank you for your attention.
Uh, thank you very much for your uh, interesting presentation. Social networks, it's uh, everything of interest uh, yeah. for us. I mean, for the people. Dear colleagues, you have chance to ask many questions because we are on time of schedule. I may ask one question. Yes. Uh, is I understood you use iterative procedure to make this yeah. approximation. So the question is, uh, do you have any proof for convergence? Maybe it may take uh, infinite number of uh, iterations. So what about uh, real infinite world applications? Infinite number of iterations. Yes. Uh, yeah, in this case, it would, would not be uh, uh, infinite number of iteration because we are considering hating algebra and this structure is locally finite. So it means that uh, numbers will repeat in, uh, in some, uh, it, it can be a very long sequence, but it'll always terminate. So um, I could not use any um, wider structure than a hating algebra. We tried with some uh, structure which are not locally finite, but the other properties, uh, uh, for example, we could not find the greatest solution. So uh, we are doing uh, for a start only on, uh, on hating algebra and this structure will always terminate in infinite number of steps. Okay, thank you. Who would like to ask this question? Nobody. Uh, that is why I ask my usual question. We are speaking about fuzziness. Yeah. In this case, we have uh, fuzzy numbers, fuzzy logic, and uh, what about membership functions? Where are from? Did you get membership functions for? Fuzzy logic, fuzzy sets. Do you uh, suggest I, yourself or? Uh, what do you? Uh, uh, well, I, I'm not sure that I understand you well. Uh, do you me, uh, think uh, why do I use this uh, uh, fuzziness in in? No, no. Uh, if you use fuzziness, okay. Yeah, at the end, you should decide what kind of uh, membership functions should you use. Yeah, where are from? Is it? Uh... Uh, so you mean a uh, structure of truth values? Yeah. Yeah, uh, well, um, as I said, uh, we need uh, this, uh, we uh, use the hating algebra as a structure of truth values for our set, because um, in that case, uh, only in that case we could uh, have, uh, it is because of the potency in this structure, uh, because when we get this lambda value, we want, or oh, me value, we want uh, the degree of similarity. If any other structure, which is not that important, we use, then um, by my multiplying me more times, then since this me value is between zero and one, the uh, mu multiplying me more times will uh, give us very small degree of similarity, which is not very good because we want to have uh, as high as possible degree of similarity. So uh, only the structure which is which have this idempotent element would be good for us. And uh, in all these um, uh, known structures of truth values that are used in our uh, classical fuzzy framework, uh, the best one was the hating algebra because of that property. That's okay. why we choose that. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Maybe thank I you. even have understood. <laughs> uh, dear colleagues, listeners, who would like to ask Uh, okay, since we are having some uh, more time, I can uh, also suggest another approach to this. Uh, 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 regular relations are good for uh, factorization of network, but not that good. It's not because uh, just because this notion is too strict. It's also because um, uh, it's heuristic. You cannot explain all the behaviors by using just equations. 
I think that it's even better to use uh, something like neural networks for uh, for clusterization, and it is a classical approach, or somehow to change our approach, um, and that's uh, what we want to do next: to change somehow our approach to have even better results in the reduction of the states. If some have some suggestion how to make change, but not uh, to use just neural networks because it's not completely different approach from our one, uh, it would be good uh, to talk about it. Okay, I, I see. Uh, I have one another question because of this comment. Uh, when we talk about uh, real world applications in social networks, uh, do we need to construct any, how to say, uh, cause, uh, how to say uh, in English, which is Please help me. Uh, we can hear you. We Resolve. cannot hear you. Uh -huh. No, I, I mean that we, we try to build a model uh, how one thing influences another one, li like a function. That's why we can use uh, fuzzy relations and, or, for example, dependence built by neural networks. Uh, why not to use uh, some associations? We don't need to describe how one factor influences another one. Just search for combinations which occurs together. Uh, what do you mean? Instead of considering relations between uh, nodes, we in, should consider... In data mining and knowledge discovery, there exist models which are called associate uh, rules. Mm -hmm. Just search for combinations of some things which occurs together. And we mm -hmm. don't need to, to describe uh, which one is an uh, argument and which one is a uh, value of function. Just combinations. Uh -huh. the... Yeah, it, it would be interesting approach. Thank you. Uh, did you mean causal, causal relationship? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. Well, the, okay. Just an idea. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. It's a good one. Anybody else? Okay, nobody asked. Uh, thank okay. you for answering our questions. And ladies and gentlemen,